Welcome to part two of my E41 ECU teardown. Um, so last time I had the board firmly attached to this thing and you can see now they've been separated. Um, so that took a little bit of effort to get them out. Uh, what I ended up trying is, so last time I sort of mentioned that I was playing around with trying to you know, pry it out or something like that um, and that wasn't super successful. Um, ultimately what I, I figured out worked really well in the end was to actually take the connectors so I sort of had to destroy um, the connectors first by removing the pins and once you do that you could then sort of uh, pull the the ECU board out so it still took a little bit longer um, after all that so let's just grab a video up here um, what you can see I did is I basically just uh, used a blowtorch again great ECU hacking tool uh, to heat up the connectors plastic to make it more pliable um, and then from there you could just pull individual pins out um, as you went and you just could kind of pull all the pins out of that push fit thing so there's one of the pins as you go along um, you can then eventually get uh, most of them working so it's not totally um, free after that basically what you had then so this is the main board um, I've already done a, some mods, so the, the main uh, processor has been removed. Um, and here's where it was fitting into. Um, so these are all the connectors, and I've removed the... Um, there, there's no pins on it anymore. So basically, it would fit um, something like this uh, into the case. Now, the problem was that even after, you know, having all of the connectors off, uh, it was still really stuck. And what basically happened is that the this compound here, so you might be able to see there's sort of this black compound um, on this little section that comes out. And this is right underneath the uh, main uh, processor BGA, so presumably for heat transfer to get heat out of that thing. Um, and this is was incredibly well stuck. Uh, you would sort of have to, so I didn't really realize it at the time, I used a screwdriver to, to scrape it a bit. Um, probably if you were redoing this, if you had a knife or something that you could sort of fit in here and then cut along the bottom would actually be really uh, successful and then the rest of it should kind of pop up. Um, so sort of, sort of aside, interesting stuff here. If you look at the backside, um, let's get the other camera up. Okay, so this is the, the back side of the board. Um, there's a number of these big capacitors actually that sort of all use, um, so they weren't soldered in. These are push fit themselves. So if you look on the back side here, um, you can see, where are they right there? There's more of these sort of push fit through hole um, parts, so not soldered on. And then on the other side, what happens is there's these carriers um, that the capacitors actually sort of snap into. Uh, so you don't have these big, you know, uh, heavy things soldered on. There's probably a little more flex that way. Um, otherwise, there's not a whole lot on the backside. Um, so what we were really interested in is I've now got the BGA off. Uh, unfortunately, it's sort of damaged the board doing this. And um, what we can do, though, is we can trace out what all of these uh, pins on the side are. So that's kind of what the, the end goal of what I was trying to do is figure out, you know, what are these test pads here? Um, in particular, there was some header down at the bottom I had mentioned last time um, that looked interesting. So we wanted to investigate all of that stuff. Um, the other thing I realized, too, is if you look at the um, BGA here, so this was the main microcontroller, and I mentioned that this part number, you sort of had to search some random websites. Um, the second line here is actually matches the mask ID, or ma like sort of a revision number, this 3N23A of the, um, the MPC, uh, MPC5676R. So this is the suspected processor. And when we compare the pinout, you can actually kind of see that indeed that more or less matches uh, what we expect. Um, so it seems pretty likely that's the, the part in use here. So if you want to take a look at what this pinout is, um, we can grab up the pinout here. Um, so this is the pinout of the device. So what I'm going to do is quickly trace out uh, on the PCB for you 
to show you uh, how this is connected. So I don't have a, a working ECU anymore, unfortunately, so I have to wait on another one for part three of the video. Um, but if anyone else had one, you know, maybe this can be useful uh, for you. So what we're going to do is we're just going to open a image of the board there. And we're going to get this. So there's my board image. Um, and I made a little pin one marking. So let's make sure that that matches. Um, so there we go. Close some of this stuff. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is figure out, you know, which of these are JTAG and anything else that could be useful. Um, for doing some hacking on this thing. Um, so here's our pinout. And we'll just take a little snip of this. And all we're gonna do is actually just overlay it right onto the PCB itself. Um, this will make it a little easier to catch any, you know, AI still wanna confirm that indeed this is the, um, come on, uh, this is the actual device in question, right? We don't, we haven't confirmed the part number anywhere. Um, so let's do that. Let's just make this invisible. Oops. So this is kind of a lazy live way of doing it, but okay, there we go. So you can see we now have a new layer. That's our pinout. Um, and all we're going to do is transform that. So uh, if you do this with a higher res a screen or properly do this, um, it probably will be a bit more readable, but this will do what we need for now. And we're just going to make it sort of half visible there. Okay. Um, so if we zoom in, sort of better align that. That sort of works. Okay, so that's close enough. Um, so a few quick things here. Uh, right away, we see that this is going to be pretty. Um, it looks pretty good. Um, so I mentioned there was this header towards the bottom of the board, and that actually looks like it's not the the JTAG uh, pinout. So that kind of was a bit of a, a trick. Um, but what we can do is we can mark what the the actual JTAG. Um, Uh, mark what the actual JTAG connections are here. So we'll just use this default color here um, and pin this out. So you can see, for example, here um, we have TDO is running up to here. So these two pads are TDO. Um, we have TCK runs along here. TCK. Um, TMS. Let's see. It's hard to see with both layers on. Um, so or, yeah, TMS looks like it runs up top there. So this looks like TMS here. So it goes long to over this way. Come on. So it looks like this is TMS. So there's kind of two pads for each, which is, I don't know why, but would be handy for uh, connecting to it easily. Um, so if that's TMS, so we're good there. Just make a little note for each one that I'm done with. Um, what else do we have? TDI. So TDI is this guy. It's going along there, there. So this is TDI. Um, we also have, so this is, there's one, there's a few more actually we, we need. I know f just from experience with this, uh, processor and we'll see uh, over here this J comp so this is another one uh, and you'll notice there's kind of two pads again so it's a bit of a tip off that this is all part of that same uh, programming header um, so that's pretty good uh, we could now connect a uh, programmer to this so I have a programmer I just have to wait for a new uh, board to come we may also need so you'll notice reset is right here as well um, reset 
doesn't seem to go to a pad right here, but it goes to this via. Uh, it may in fact go to one of these other pads somewhere else. Like I, this pad, I don't know what, what it's doing, um, but I'll just mark this via as reset for now. Um, I had mentioned last time too, I was sort of looking at potential stuff that could be useful for attacking it. Um, the boot config pig right here, this actually lets us enable serial boot mode. And you'll see rather conveniently, it comes out here to this jumper here. So we should probably mark that. And this is boot config one. Um, you know, so this is actually kind of a good sign that they did pin it out, that that stuff might be kind of enabled. Um, there's also a PLL config one, and this is this little jumper here. Um, this is less clear, it's gonna be useful, but it could be interesting because if you wanna change any of the uh, the boot speeds or st stuff like that, and using the PLL config options can be handy. Um, there's again a few more of these that go under the board that I don't know what are. Um, what else do we have here? And if we do enable, so the other thing that we'll have to pin out um, is if we do enable boot config one, the serial mode, we need RxDA, TxDA, which I had looked up before. Oh, here they are. Um, so you can see TxDA goes to this via here. Oops. And RxDA goes to this via here. So by default, these are what's used um, by the boot assist module, BAM. TX. Um, so if we if we can turn on the the, the boot assist module mode, uh, this gives us some sort of serial communications to the device. So that'd be interesting to test. Um, so those two vias will need what we want to make sure something's not driving them though. That's a that's a bit of a, a trick there. Um, so I did pin out uh, on the board. Uh, you know before I had this, well I had this all apart, um, and I found out that they do go over here to uh, Lin, so this driver chip, I believe this is the one. Um, and I forget, I think it might be these two pins, but um, I'll double check, it could be one of one of these two. Um, this is like a Lin driver. So this device here is a Lin driver. Um, so it's just a bus on automotive systems you'll find often. Uh, and it goes to the TXRX. And one of these pins is actually like a sleep pin that we could hopefully override to to disable the chip so that it won't be trying to overpower our RXTX. Um, there's a few other, if you're, you wanna play along, interesting things too we might wanna look at. Um, reset out, so reset out here, goes to here. So this is reset out. Um, so this in theory will let us know when the device has got out of reset. Um, and it may be useful for trying fault injection to, to check the devices rebooting and stuff like that. Um, we also do confirm, so remember one of the things I said is, you know, it wasn't clear this is in fact the right chip. Um, if you look at the uh, VCC and ground connections on this, uh, you'll notice that they do seem to match up, right? So we have like VDD here and that's all running to one, VSS is all running to one. Um, so it seems very likely, you know, in combination with the, the mask ID on the top matching, um, that this is in fact the exact device in use. Um, we could use, so there's a, a Extol crystal stuff here. Um, so you can see that's just going to this crystal here. Um, this, you know, this stuff's pretty obvious because the crystal is sitting right there. Um, but any of these could be useful um, for feeding in a clock or for doing clock synchronization. So we might might mark those as well. Um, one other kind of important or uh, useful one too, actually, and there's this our re uh, regulator control pin. I don't know if that's connected even. Oh, so it looks like it's not connected. Um, so there would be a regulator control. I don't know if they use the internal regulator or not uh, on this device, so that may be why it's not connected. Um, but there's kind of a, a weird sounding pin called VSSFL. Um, and when I was looking at this guy, is if you look at VSSFL, what is that? Um, and it just says tie to VSS, so tie to ground. 
Um, and it's a specific pin, but it doesn't actually describe what, you know, what the point is. Um, if you look, luckily it's described a little bit more in, where is this here? Uh, it's described in this application note, and they actually tell you that VSSFL is a special ground signal for flash. Um, so why would you, you know, why might that be useful for for us? If we want to corrupt some of the flash for part of fault injection, um, this could actually be a potentially a way to do it if we can interrupt the ground just to the flash uh, module itself. So that's something that's worth checking out um, because we may be interested in investigating that pin a bit. And luckily for us, actually, if you take a look here, so here's VSS FL. And if we just turn this off for a second, you'll notice that it conveniently goes up here and around, um, and it doesn't actually go right to our via. So theoretically, you know, you could kind of cut here or something like that pretty easily because um, it's connected back to ground here. So this is sort of VSS FL. So we'll just mark that. as a little separate thing too, V-S-S-F-L. Um, so I'm not, it's not clear that's gonna be useful, um, but could be another interesting thing to investigate. But with this, really what I'm waiting for now um, is two things. So I would like to uh, get a, uh, get an, an updated version or a new, basically a new ECU that's not busted apart like this one here is, um, you know, now that I've taken the BGA off and stuff like that. Um, the second thing is to investigate actually making a little target board. So like with the UFO system, um, to have some targets that will help uh, investigate the the device itself. So this could potentially mean taking, you know, the, uh, the device from the ECU and actually soldering it to a test board or something like that. Um, but that's kind of all I had for the part two of this ECU teardown. Um, at this point, I'm going to wait for a new one so I can connect up to, to JTAG. Um, I haven't have a programmer for this series of chips, so we can see if that's working. Um, and also try talking to the boot assist module and figure out how that's configured. Um, so hopefully something there will give us some more interesting stuff to look at and not just turn totally into a dead end. But that's all for now.